It's day 96. We're going to be taking data from web pages using manual web scraping. Now, unfortunately, not every website provides us with an API so that we can access the data and use it as we want. So one way we can get around this is by scraping the data. And what that means is literally just downloading the web page and poking at it until we can find the information that we want. This is a bit of a manual process at first, but once you've got it set up, the run button will just extract the information you want from a page and show it you in your console. We're gonna start experimenting with this, and what we're gonna do is we're going to attempt to extract the top 10 restaurants near us. So your first job is to get onto a website like Yelp, put in restaurants in your local location, get this page up, and then get the URL. So. I'm going to copy this entire URL and I'm going to take it into my REPL. And I'm just going to leave it there for now so we've got something to start with. And I'm going to bring in some libraries I need. Now I'm going to need requests once again because I am talking to a web page on the wider internet. But I also need to bring in Beautiful Soup. Now Beautiful Soup is a library specifically for extracting the contents of web pages. And this is really, really helpful for us because we could just read that in. And we could just use dot find as if it was one big string, but you need to remember that these websites are all written in HTML and modern HTML is really complicated and big. So beautiful soup helps us pass that data. We're going to go from BS4 import beautiful soup and run that because we want the REPL to install the libraries, all its dependencies and make our next run much, much quicker. That was nice and easy actually. Now, our first job is to use requests to go get that web page. And we're just using get here because we're sending the information straight out with a URL. We're not sending it any other information. And we'll use this, which is a little bit different. HTML is a response text. And I'm going to print this out for you just so you can see what's happening here. And that's a lot of output. But what it's done is it's gone and got that entire web page and we've got it sitting there as text. What that looks like, of course, is if we inspect the page, we're looking at the actual code that is available on that page. Why don't you go and copy this code and see if you can download the web page you're looking at. The next thing we need to do is pass it over to Beautiful Soup to make some sense of it. So I'm going to create a variable called soup and I'm going to just call Beautiful Soup on the HTML. The second argument has to be HTML.parser. What a parser is, is it's a type of software that will go through and recognize tokens in the text and break it down into something more meaningful. Just run that to check you haven't broken anything. Looks good. The next thing we need to do is try and identify the things we actually want to find on this page. So I would like to find, I'm scrolling down because the first results are sponsored. This is the number one restaurant on our Yelp results at the moment. So I'm gonna right click on that title and inspect. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger here so we can see what's going on. That entire thing is a hyperlink, which within it has the text, it has a link, and it has a class. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on that, and I'm going to copy the element. Back over in my REPL, I'm just going to put this in so I can see what's happening with it. And we're going to have to delete this in a moment because it's going to mess everything up otherwise. But it's an anchor tag that has a class to it. Now it's very worth quickly inspecting another one just to see what's similar with it. Let's have a look at the number two. So I'll inspect that. I'm going to copy that element as well and pop that down there. Now what we're looking for is similarities. They're both anchor tags. They both have hyperlinks. They have classes. And interestingly, these classes are identical. So that means we've got something to look for. We need to tell Beautiful Soup what part of the web page you want to look for. With that in mind, I need to be looking for anchor tags. So I need to be looking for a tags and I need to be looking for the class being this. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to make a link called my links and I'm going to do soup dot find all. Now, there are two arguments here, one of which is a dictionary. The first one is what am I looking for? I'm looking for anchor tags. The second one is a dictionary that tells it what class I'm looking for. So we say class 
And that class is going to be this value here. Bring that down and put that in there. So what I'm basically saying is I want to find all anchor tags with that class. Let's print out the len of my links. Let's see how many it found. So let's run that. It'll go and find the page, pull those anchor tags in, and it's found 12 of them. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Let's use a loop to go through and pull the data out. For link in my links, we're going to print out link.txt. Okay, so we've got a bit of oddness going on. We're getting that same tag is being used at the same time to put the name of the town in and the word restaurants. So I can probably ignore those first two. So let's put a counter on here. Counter is greater than one. Print it out and we'll always do counter plus equals one. So that'll avoid the first two. Now we've got a list of our restaurants being pulled from that website. Let's see if we can also get the link. So by using the setup of a dictionary and calling the href value, because everything that it found in that anchor tag has been stored as a dictionary, I can actually print out the address. Now, unfortunately, these addresses are what we call local addresses. They are relative to where we are in the web page, but we can probably sort that out ourselves. If we click on one of them, we take a look at the address you can see that it's just yelp.co.uk in my case it might be different for you slash biz the websites it's sending us to are all slash biz so why don't we print out an f string that starts with https www.yelp.com then includes the link now i should be able to follow any of those links to the website address why don't you spend some time now and build your own yelp restaurant scraper. Get the top 10 of something in any place you want to go visit in or your local area. So beautiful soup works wonderfully. You've just got to find where the text is, identify what kind of tag it is, identify what class you're looking for, and you can pull out all that information. This isn't as nice as an API because an API will always give you clean data. And as we saw when we scraped the Yelp website, the first two results were just useless to us. So you do have to do a bit more manual work. And if they do update the website in any way, it could break your program. So this is what we call a fragile program in that we are relying on somebody else that we don't know to maintain the consistency of their website. Of course, scraping a website is often frowned upon anyway, because we are spending their web traffic just to pull some data out and not looking at their adverts or anything. Common problems. The most common problem that we get is simply not identifying the right tag. When you're looking for a part of a website that has a tag, we need to look at the first argument in the tag. For instance, if we wanted to look at this website and find the headlines of the stories, I'm going to right click on the headline and inspect. In my code there, I'm going to take a look at it. It's an anchor tag. But you'll notice that straight within that, we don't have the text. The text is actually here in the heading. So we copy this and copy another two and see if we can spot the pattern. It's not always going to be in an anchor tag. Sometimes it's going to be in a H. Sometimes it's going to be in a div. You need to keep your eye on what that's doing. And that needs to be the first argument in your find all command. The class is optional. It doesn't need to be there. So if you are struggling to get it, you can just get all the anchor tags and then use if statements in your loops to deal with that. I've broken some code, go fix it. Your challenge today is very, very simple. I would like you to go and scrape the headlines from Hacker News. And I would like you only to display headlines that includes the words Python or Replit. You're going to need to scrape the website in a very similar way to that which we did with Yelp.com. You're then going to need to use a for loop and an if statement to see if the words replit or Python are in any of those headline strings. If you find a headline that contains that data, you want to print it on the screen. Of course, you could also include the list of things you're looking for to other things you're interested. Make your own Hacker News personalization system. When you're done, share with us in the community by publishing it. Use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to share it with us on social media. Now that we've got the basics of web scraping going, tomorrow's project will see you scraping an article from Wikipedia.